Perfect. Uh, now, I want us to, I uh, just want to give a, an overview of what we did yesterday. Yesterday, we looked at uh, the stakeholders in the curriculum development process. And uh, some of the stakeholders that we looked at, we were able to talk about the, the KIs. We talked about the, the Kenya National Youth Examinations Council. We talked about director quality uh, assurance and standards, educational administrators. We talked about the teachers. We talked about the TTC tutors. Uh, we also talked about the, the county governments, uh, the parents and the community. We were also able to look at uh, the, the teacher unions, the teacher unions. On the other side, we were able to look at the curriculum implementers, uh, which we realized uh, uh, the teachers, the, uh, the decursors, we talked about the curriculum support officers, uh, the head teachers, uh, the education officers. We talked about the parents, community leaders, and we also talked about the school boards of management. We looked at the types of evaluation. And we realized that there were three. That is on the pre, pre assessment or diagnostic evaluation, which is done uh, before the implementation process. And uh, here, you will, uh, as we are going to look at the curriculum development process, uh, we will see how the pre assessment or diagnostic evaluation is applied to, uh, to it. Uh, we also talked about the formative evaluation, which is done while uh, during the, the process of implementation. And finally, we talked about the summative uh, evaluation. We were also able to look at uh, uh, the evaluation tools. And uh, the evaluation tools, we talked about the questionnaires. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, the interview and the dis uh, discussion schedules. We talked about the tests and the observation schedules together with learners. And then we looked at the uh, learners with the special needs. Now, we were also supposed to begin uh, by looking at strategies for teaching in an inclusive setting. Uh, what are some of the strategies? Uh, that is where we are starting. What are some of the strategies for teaching in an inclusive setting? Yes, Rachel. Peer tutoring. The peer uh, tutoring. Uh, yes, Samuel Midimo. Uh, child centered method. Child centered method. Uh, yes, zero four zero one zero four zero one. Okay, Katie. Total communication. Total communication. And uh, uh, Kate, please maybe just to find out what is this total communication. Somebody in the class, uh, what is total communication? Using all forms of communication, you can use sign language. Uh -huh, using all forms of communication. All right, yes, Juliet. The total communication, I think, is the use of both verbal and nonverbal cues. Verbal and nonverbal. Mm 
Right. Uh, thank you very much. So what uh, maybe we, we can add on other strategies? Uh, thank you very much, Midimo. Yeah, it is good if we rename. Uh, um, I was wondering on uh, 0401, or somebody is using a different uh, name or a gadget name, please, it is good if you rename yourself so that uh, we can refer to you well. Yes, somebody is say, saying uh, you can use the project, the field trip, uh, the holistic approach. Right, state the four types of curriculum for SNE. Uh, I think that one we have ever done. So it's a walkover. State the four types of curriculum for SNE. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, Pildema. Adopted curriculum. Yes. Adopted. Yes, adopted curriculum. Uh, yes, uh, Amadi. Adapted curriculum. Adapted curriculum. Adapted curriculum. Thank you. Alice Kwamboka. Okay, specialized curriculum. Specialized curricula curriculum. Differentiated curriculum. Differentiated curriculum. Differentiated, uh, differentiated curriculum, uh -huh, almost there. Pascal? Yes. We have specialist curriculum. We have specialist uh, curriculum. Uh, so somebody has mentioned the differentiated curriculum. Uh, maybe you can also help us to understand uh, whether that is right, class, do we have also differentiated curriculum? No. And uh, where do we put which curriculum best suits the gifted and talented? Specialized. The specialized uh, curriculum. Uh, so when we talk about curriculum differentiation, maybe just to find out what is curriculum differentiation? Yes, what is curriculum differentiation? Uh, yes, Philema. Uh, Curriculum differentiation, it's a process of making adjustments to, to regular curriculum in order to suit the learners with special needs and abilities or different abilities. Yes, yes, Mili. Thank you, Pilema. Mili? No, I had not lower my hand. Okay, okay. I kindly repeat what you said. I said, yes, I said it is the modification of the regular curriculum to suit the learners with the different abilities. Thank you. Yeah. Right, right. So we can carry on class. Now, state N6, uh, teacher professional records and i want i would want us to to state more than six though the question is uh, asking for six mary gatanga mr pascal yes i think it could have been better if we could uh, if we had uh, talked me explained those curriculum before we move to the next question 
Okay, okay. Uh, Mary, Mary, let's, uh, let's respond to this. Then uh, I will start with you, Mary. Uh, so on the four types of curriculum, I want us to start uh, by looking at uh, adapted uh, curriculum, adapt, rather adopted, ADO, adopted curriculum. Uh, Rachel, are you able to tell us something about the adopted curriculum? Can I try? Yes. Adopted, I think it's a curriculum that is brought in without changing anything. That is the adopted? Yes. All right, all right. Koreti, unadopted still? Adopted, you make minor modification on the regular curriculum to be by learners with special needs and disabilities. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Alice Kwamboka. Okay. Can I go to adapted curriculum, Pascal? Yes. So adapted curriculum is just the normal is just the normal curriculum that is meant. It is the curriculum that is meant to suit an individual learner. It is designed towards an individual learner. <laughs> Individual needs of Alana. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that is um, adapted curriculum. What about specialist curriculum? Yes, somebody on the specialist curriculum. Specialist curriculum. I, I can try maybe. Yes. Maybe a curriculum that is used maybe for the, the children who are gifted. What I'm not pretty sure. All right, thank you. Yes. Uh, Pascal. Yes, Alice. Yes, can I try on the specialist curriculum? This is a type of curriculum very far from the normal curriculum that we use, but it supports the curriculum. It supports the regular curriculum, though it's very far from our curriculum, the normal one that we use. Uh -huh, thank you. Yes, Fosaida. It is also used for learners who have severe disabilities and also mm -hmm. uh, the ones who have multiple disabilities. Specialized, I'm a specialist. <clears throat> Rosaida. Specialist. Specialized. Yeah. 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 Specialist. Yeah. Specialist. Yeah. Specialist. Yeah. Specialist. Sour. Good. Can I try? Yes. Yes, Janet. Uh, not Janet, but uh, there's somebody who wants to try. I think the specialist curriculum is a type of curriculum that uh, uh, supports the regular curriculum, but it offers something that is totally different from the normal curriculum. For example, uh, we have the sign language, we have the training of the brains and stuff like that. Please remind me your name so that uh, I don't uh, refer to you as, uh, please remind me your name. Caro. Okay, Caro. Let me save that. Yes, Janet, Janet, what? Your hand is up, Janet. Pascal. Uh, adapted a uh, specialist curriculum. Yes. This is only meant for learners with special needs, just as the name mentions. Right, right. What about specialized curriculum? I think some of them are name but are confused because it's always me as an I use special. To fault in the column we show specialized and specialist. Specialized curriculum. Pascal? Yes. Nijaribu. Yes. 
This is the curriculum that has made the exhaustively and minor changes in the regular curriculum. Minor changes in the regular curriculum. So it is like uh, adopted. Because me, the way I, I understood the adopted curriculum, uh, it was a um, man, to, it is a normal curriculum that we have, but uh, you will not make major changes. You will simply make very minor changes to suit the learners with special needs in a maybe in an institution or in your whatever. For example, <coughs> you are having a learners who are having a behind. You will put them in front, give, provide large prints, but very minimal change, not so much. Yes. So now in Vile I may define specialized, Nikama I may introduce a co-adopted. Yes. Let me add something on the specialized curriculum. This is a regular curriculum, which is modified to suit a specific target group of children. For example, children with severe disabilities, such as those with multiple and mental disability. Are you getting? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Pascal, let me repeat what I had said, please. Okay. Yes. It is a curriculum that has been modified so that it can be uh, used for learners who have severe disabilities and also multiple disabilities. You need specialist. I'm a, uh, me specialized. You uh, need specialized. A specific group of yes. children. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it is emphasizes um, more on the IEP. Thanks. Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Now, class, I want us to continue. Unless there is a question in that area. Yes, there is a question. Pascal. Yes. I was asking when you were discussing about strategies and also I heard some of them talking about methods. So the, is there a difference between strategies which you can use and also the methods? I heard some of us mentioning about the methods. Now again, Ingependa Kuliza, we mentioned four, we've only mentioned three, adopted, specialist, specialized, do we also have adapted here? Adapted, 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 adopted, adapted, adopted, specialist, specialized. So we, yes. we have not had people talking about adapted. We have talked about it. Okay. So somebody has asked a question, do the strategies, the same as methods? Somebody, somebody, uh, do we say that, uh, uh, yes, Juliet? They are not the same. The answers we gave were not for the question. I just realized after we passed that. So now what are the strategies for teaching in an inclusive setting? Pascal, we have a of learning resources. Yes. So Adaptation of the learning resources. Adaptation of the learning resources. Really? Um, I, I beg to defer. Do are they under the uh, peer tutoring and uh, stuff like that? The villa una is a idea our toto. Kama kuna special special needs na watoto regular. 
strategy for now you will teach them. Know the methods. Strategies are different from the methods. Yes, Janet. The curriculum should be modified. Curriculum modification, Juliet. Another question. Is assessing individual needs of the learners. The assessment of the individual needs of the learner. I've not able to repeat that. Repeat that kind of thing. Guys, Pascal, they will repeat the third point. Janet, please, Janet, mute. Janet, word. Janet, mute. Janet, word. Please mute, Janet. Mute as mean. You are saying the third question, the third point. They started making noise. I didn't hear. We have talked about the, the curricular modification. Adaptation of learners' learning resources. Have we talked about the third one, really? Yes, something on in the, on the what, what learners. I can't remember. Yes, Juliet. Just talked. Juliet? Yeah, I have four of them, so I don't know if I should mention all of them or we have someone else who wants to give it up. Go ahead. So we have assessing individual needs of the learners. That's one. Yes. Two, we have assessing the ability and challenges of each individual learner. Three. That's that. Should I go on? Yes. Three, we have develop, develop and implement an IEP, individualized educational program. Then four, we have provide remedial instructions. Okay. You are assessing your yeah, assess the, the first two assessing a book. The first assessing uh, in, the first one is assessing individual. Who is okay? It's okay. Uh, what an to pigia kelele. Juliet, just carry on. The first one is assessing individual needs of the learners. So the first mm -hmm. one is individual needs of the learners. Then the mm -hmm. second one is assessing the ability and challenges of each individual learner. Madam, okay, what did you cut a short? You could leave the Hello? Yes, Hello. Ask, ask, yes. Unaida na to kifun to mambo ya inclusive education. Mi niliskia malala kitu ambe vitu ya group teaching, individualized ya education program. Akasema pia tutoring na something ilikuwa ta, na pia tutoring. And learning strategies. Hiyo vitu zilikuwa ine kwani hizo ni malaika na hizi ni Mr. Pasta. Yes. I will methods. I will tell my strategies to employ. Pascal. Mr. Yes, Rachel. Yes. Can I ask some can pick a teaching and learning strategies? Yes. Do you use it? Use task analysis, assignments, thematic, holistic. Let me start. Mr. Pascal. Yes. I'm also supporting the same because we can get module 16. Yes. Is the third, you know, it is, I think, is the third topic, page 66. Oh. In your column. They are talking of teaching and learning strategies. This section oh. we shall study the same. So that then after that, that's when they are saying holistic approach, networking, diagnostic, direct instruction, unite, unit teaching, team teaching. Thing. 
You are breaking, you are breaking. And could you say, are you getting me now? Yes. Oh. I'm saying the question is. You are seriously breaking. We can't get you. We can't get you. Yes, Atifuma. Now, uh, allow me to say this. That uh, okay. I believe uh, the teaching strategies that are the same as uh, the teaching methods that we are going to lay in a class because the strategies are planned that you have for something. So to me, I think the the word strategy should not confuse us here. Not unless there is uh, the teaching methods that are uh, maybe aside from what we are discussing. But I believe teaching strategies are the same as the teaching method that we are going to employ in a class. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tifuma. Yes, uh, uh, Rosaida, then Juliet. If I can remember, we were told the methods are the major ways in which we are going to teach. Then the strategies what other uh, uh, activities are you going to come up so that you can deliver? If, if I'm not wrong, okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yes, um, Juliet. Then Alice. I wanted then. to support what Rosida has just said. That's what was in my mind. I can remember when we were addressing the module, this question arose. Alafu, the tutor can address the same way Rosaida has addressed it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kwamboka, Alice? Uh, Kwamboka? Yes, Mr. Pascal, and now I'm asking on the same because the, I think the question was asking state four strategies for teaching an inclusive setting. But if you go back to the module, the strategies in your mepewa up or nindios in your mesema. So let's kuna change. I am yet to know. Pascal. Yes. Pascal. Yes. I think you know this we should not, you know, when you look at the strategies that are mentioned, yes. They are just the methods that we are going to use, like peer teaching. That one is a method yeah. of teaching. So the one strategy should not confuse us. Let us just take it as uh, the method that we are going to employ in an inclusive class, like peer teaching, using of visual visual aids, uh, hearing aids. Uh, hearing aids. Okay, thank you. Uh, many people are uh, many people have been unmuting. I don't know why there is too much noise. I've I've shared something from the module on the chat box. Two hands on that area maybe. Yes, Christine and then Alice as we proceed. Otherwise we will we'll keep mark timing and uh, moving forward and, and backward. Yes, Christine? Mr. Yes, Pascal, I wanted to say yeah. We are handling module 14. Yes. Under the same mo module 14, that is page 23, we have that area there. They are talking about strategies for teaching in an inclusive setting. Yes. It has the same four answers as Juliet has uh, put it. We have assessed individual needs of the learners, assess the abilities and the challenges of each individual learner, develop and, and implement an IEP, provide remedial instructions. So do we use the knowledge of module 16 or we use the, 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 module, the, the knowledge which is under module 14 because we are handling module 14? That was my question. Right, thank you. Uh, I think both can apply now. Both, both can apply in, the, in this case. 
Yeah, both can apply because uh, the module 14 talk about uh, uh, what, what uh, uh, Christine has mentioned. Pascal. Yes. From what Madame has said, the four sections that she, she has mentioned. Yes. Is, is there any statement that expounds on what she has mentioned? And if there is that or such a statement, what does that statement say? Then, uh, remember, these modules we were told that in, uh, the information repeats itself in uh, several modules. So if they ask you about teaching strategy that can be applied, let me reiterate on this. Talk of the teaching method that you can apply in an in inclusive class. Because we are told we should not cram the, uh, we should not master the modules, but let us get the information from the modules, internalize it, then apply the, uh, the, the uh, possible application that you can to give the correct answer. Sure. Uh, I want us to continue without. Uh, Pascal. Yes. Pascal. Yes. Page 23, Ghana, Kisiyun. Page 23 of uh, module number 14. Atan 23, Bia Kwaini, Yasim. Yeah, you, Yasim, you know, to me, it is on page 23. Meaning, if you can pull it on to individual needs. No, on page 23, there is curriculum. Uh, for learners with special needs, categories of learners with special needs, and under it, strategies for teaching in an inclusive setting. Angalia module ningapi ya mefungua? 014. Check it again, because that is exactly what is in the module. Saa mutu atanishia yeyo yake. Now, I, I want us to continue so that we can uh, uh, avoid mark timing. I have, I've, I've shared it on, 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 on the chat. So we are saying that uh, strategies for teaching in an inclusive uh, setting, we have assess, assessing individual needs of the learner, uh, which is very important. You also have to assess the abilities and challenges of each individual learner. You have to develop and implement an IEP, uh, of which we are going to look at uh, IEP in, uh, in, in its full. Um, we are going to look at the parts, and then you need to provide in uh, um, remedial instruction, uh, maybe when the IEP has not worked in a, uh, maybe accordingly. Then, uh, Types of curriculum for uh, special needs. We have talked about the adapted curriculum, the adopted curriculum. We have talked about the specialist, uh, specialized curriculum and the specialist curriculum. Uh, I don't know, we did not talk about the teacher professional records. So what are some of the teacher professional records? Mary Gatanga, you are supposed to be the first one to respond. Mary Gatanga, teacher professional records. Just one as we as we carry on. A scheme of work. The scheme of work, thank you. Yes, Coretti. Lesson plan. Lesson plan, Christine Moindi. Record of work covered. Record of work covered. Yes, Kimati. Oh, Femina. Class register. Class register, thank you, Femina. Class. Femina. Timetable. Time yes. Timetable. The, the class timetable. Uh, not the class timetable, but uh, uh, that is the, 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 the teacher's own per and personal timetable. Uh, Pascal? Yes. Lina is trying to get inside of the class, but she cannot manage. I don't know what is the reason. She was in, uh -huh. but unfortunately, she's calling me to ask that you should let her to go to come in. Oh, we do not have the we do not have the the waiting room is not enabled. So 
she is supposed to get into class directly without waiting in the uh, without getting to the waiting room because it's, it's okay yeah yes kennedy odero kennedy thank you sir yes That Kennedy, Pascal, the class, the class attendance register as another professional document. Thank you, the class attendance register. Let me take the hands that are up, please. If your hand is up, check. I can see Janet, Kimadi, and uh, and Rosaida. So those are three. Allow me to pick the three so that we can continue. Yes, Rosaida. A health record. The health record. Yes. yes. Progress record. Progress record. Thank you very much, Janet. So Janet. Right, thank you. Let us continue, please. So here we have a list of uh, professional records. Please uh, make sure that your background is silent. If not, mute yourself. We have the teacher professional records. We are talking about the uh, there's a, a syllabus. Excuse me, Pascal. Yes. The screen is not clear. It's not clear. Yes. It should be clear. Is it clear? Yes. Let me do the same to the, the other one. Right. Now, so we talk about the, the syllabus, the schemes of work. We have the lesson plan. We also have the, the learner's progress records. At the same time, we have class attendance register, the lesson notes, we have the, the, the class inventory, the IEP, record of work covered, the personal timetable. Uh, of course, we have, because we have also mentioned the lesson notes. Now, somebody is asking, what is class inventory? Let me assist there. Yes. This uh, document or a booklet that contains uh, all the equipment, books, uh, resources that we are using in class that belongs to the school and we have given to the learners. If I'm not wrong. Because an inventory is a document that contains whatever an institution has given you and you have issued the learners. Yes. Uh, yes, Rosaida. Point of clarification. Still on the records, uh, the IEP. Is it supposed only to be IEP or IEP book? Because when you say the IEP, it's the program. Please come up again. I'm saying. Yes. Like for the schemes of work, we know it's a document, isn't it? But yes. now when we are talking of IEP, it's the program itself. So should we add something on the IEP or we just leave it at that? Uh, IEP is not a program, it's a book. IEP. Rosaida. Yeah, I mm -hmm. feel book. Rosaida. Yes. We have schemes of work, eh? 
Uh -huh. we, we just mentioned schemes of work and we know it is a book, eh? <laughs> yeah. So when we come to the IEP, Mm -hmm. uh, the same applies. Remember, in as much as it is a program, it is a program that is written. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why we leave it like this. Oh, so I just yes. needed that clarification. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, Juliet. Juliet. Pascal, I've, I have a question on the lesson notes and. Uh, class inventory yes these two keeps on uh challenging me do they fall under professional records really <laughs> juliet they fall can i tell you now the class inventory yeah um some of these things uh, they may not be very practical maybe depending with the maybe where we are we are all working at but i want to say that uh Class inventory is a very important tool in the classroom. Remember, this is where now those schools that uh, do not have, uh, uh, may, maybe they, they are having the textbooks, there is a library, but the textbooks are, are, are handed onto the hands of the, maybe the subject teachers or the class teacher. So the class teacher must make sure that a proper record is kept of, about the books he must make sure that each and every learner in the class, they have their chairs. Now, if one chair is broken, then in the inventory it is noted, it is indicated. If it was broken willfully by the pupil, then it goes into that inventory. Now, the inventory is very important when it comes to accountability with the, the resources that are found within the classroom. Remember, your boss, or uh, your supervisor, your teacher, will not come to, to find out what is there, but you are his eye in the classroom. So when there's a problem, I will always come and check on the inventory. If the tablets have been given, if the laptops have been given for the purposes of uh, learning, maybe for example, in grade three, they are handed down to the, they are handed, uh, to the teacher. Now it is upon the teacher to keep proper records. And I can say, confidently that uh, with the new changes in the education uh, system many people will find themselves in the uh, in the in, in the wrong places think about the special schools the inventory uh, in the special schools the children with special needs they are having uh, assistive devices and uh, if you don't if you don't put the records in order you may be prone to to put your hands in the pocket and uh, and pay Number two, on the lesson notes, lesson notes is very important. Those who were saying yesterday that um, uh, the Ministry of Education is making some rounds trying to, uh, to assess the implementation of the CBC in the classrooms, they will, one of the documents that they come and try to check is on the lesson notes. And as a teacher, you should have the lesson notes. I don't know, but somebody, someone else uh, may also let me see if uh, someone else wants to say something on the lesson notes and class inventory as we Anna, Pascal. Yes. Pascal. Yes. Let us let, let, let me, Juliet should know that uh, right now the Ministry of Education has been issuing books to all learners in the public schools. Now yes. uh, in a class, it is a class teacher who is in charge of that class. Mm -hmm. So it is the class teacher who is going to issue the books to the learners. Where will you record the books? In the inventory, is that is, it is the class teacher who is going to issue books. Uh, I think under also uh, uh, desks, uh, chairs. Uh, maybe if you are in a, a school that uh, has all the apparatus for sciences, when you are doing any practicals, you are the one who will issue the apparatus and the equipment to the learners. Where will you record in the inventory? So inventory is very important because it will give you a record of what you have issued and what has been uh, tendered back by the learners. Now, lesson notes. This one proves uh, that you've broken down uh, the lesson and you've given out summary to what you have taught. Because the lesson plan is, all, uh, is just a framework of what you are going to do in that class. But what will show the ministry that uh, and your administration that you have done uh, you have worked in that class. They summarize 
notes that we are going to give. Those are the lesson notes. We also have in the CBC, we have other documents like the journal, learners journal, you'll have to prepare them. Learners have, they, they are supposed to have their journal to record what they, are, what they are aiming at and what they are going to do in a class and, and what, they have, what they have done. We also have things like the calendar. Sometimes you forget about the calendar, but when you go to uh, public TTCs, teachers are forced to prepare a calendar. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kipuma. Right, uh, class, let's carry on. There we are. Now, stage six, stage six legal instruments that govern education in Kenya. State six legal instruments that govern education in Kenya. Yes, Midimo, let's start with you. The Education Act. The Education Act of which year? <laughs> uh, I think 1960. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, it was, it was, it was Don't worry, we'll come there. Yes, uh, Koreti, Koreti Chero. Ajaribu to persons with disability act 203. Persons with disability act 203. Thank you very much. Yes, Rachel Morionga. The Children's Act. The Children's Act. Okay. The TSC Act. The TSC Act. TSC Act. Kuna kitu public health act, Pascal. Kama niliote. Uliota goreti ni ya COVID. So, yes, Samuel, you want to still up? The child's act, I'm mean. Sorry, my, Pascal, my yes. Higher Education Loans Board Act 1995. Higher Education Loans Board Act uh, 95, 1995. Very right. Uh, I can't see any other hand. I want us to continue. Describe the curriculum development process. Now, before we go there, let's finish with this one. So, the legal instruments that govern education in Kenya. We are talking about Education Act of 1968. Please, when you get time, find out. When you get time, find out uh, on the what Education Act of 1968 is, uh, is talking about on education. Get the Teacher Service Commission Act of 1967, the Children Act of 2003, the Persons with Disability Act of 2003, the Higher Education Loans Board of 1995, and then there is Commission of Higher Education. The next question is, describe the curriculum development and implementation process. Describe the curriculum development and the implementation process. There we are. And then we will also describe the structure of the Ministry of Education. And that will be our last question down here. So describe the curriculum development and implementation process. So it is having nine stages. And so I want us to discuss them uh, under each and every stage. Yes, Mary Gatanga. The first stage. Yes. The need of assessment. The assessment, the needs of assessment. Pascal. Yes, yes uh, Kifuma. 
is this the is this the module that uh, our tall guy refused to use the machine yes 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 it is it is you got it right eh? uh huh yes yes christine muindi Christine Moindi. May I say something on needs assessment? Right, yes. On needs assessment, for example, where currently we are having the CBC, the needs assessment was done and they found out that maybe the F4 curriculum was exam oriented and uh, did not give learners enough time for practical uh, chance or uh, for practical space for do practical so they would come out only being trained uh, for white collar jobs so they wanted something a curriculum that would train uh, learners to come out as holistic yeah, to come out holistically were trained that's why they decided to come up with this you see after taking the needs assessment based on whatever is affecting our society, okay, the society currently, also on the, the world trend. Thank you. Yes, Juliet? Piloting. I try, although. Huh? There is something you have skipped there, piloting. Juliet, you are talking about pilot piloting? Yeah. At which stage? I don't know. It's just a trial. It's a point that came in my mind. Okay, okay. Second step okay. is policy policy formulation. Right, policy formulation. Let's say something about the policy formulation. This involves the members of, of parliament, the cabinet, the society, where they discuss and see how they are going to adapt the, the curriculum. Yeah. Yes, Pascal. Oh, yes. Pascal, uh -huh. for policy, policy assessment, can we just say that is the, the, the public participation? Mm -hmm. Under the because policy, when you say when you say that the parliament, uh, that's the legislature, then members of the society getting involved in discussing, then that one you are narrowing down to public participation because members of the public are only allowed to do what we call public participation in any government project or government uh, opinion. Remember at this stage is when they will come up with the who was the night one? They will appoint specialist. After the needs assessment, they will appoint the specialist to form uh, certain committees to discuss. Uh, because where you where you are talking about the the public participation, it, that one may take place during needs assessment. The public will be allowed to give their verdict. In and the levy and in and the levy, and then after that we have the now policy formulation. They come up, they come up with the committees to assess whatever had been uh, found out on the ground. Then they come up with a formula on how to implement this. Not dead. Thank you, thank you very much for the explanation. Uh, so we have talked about the needs assessment, we have talked about the policy assimilation, uh, rather policy formulation, sorry for that. Um, and the third one, the third, the, third, uh, the third stage. Curriculum planning. There is the curriculum planning. What happens at the curriculum planning? With the piloting. 
No, 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 not the piloting. No, this gen general outlook of the program. Yeah, the general outlook of the program is uh, laid down and the, the long-term and the short-term objectives are uh, brought forward. The resources and uh, the timing are all uh, looked at, of course, the facilities, and then there is going to be the, the, the data collection that is going to, uh, to follow. It also will be looking at the examination procedures and things like that. That is on the that is on the on the on the, on the third one on the curriculum uh, planning. The fourth one. No, design. Yes, the preparation now of the curriculum uh, designs. The curriculum uh, designs. So what happens there? See, I thought the curriculum design in and your development of curriculum support materials. So the fourth one is development of curriculum support materials. There is no you can develop before planning and come up with the designs. It's when you take whatever you designed for to the ground to try. What? <laughs> The fourth one is the development of curriculum support materials. And the fourth one is development of curriculum design. That that is planning. Curriculum design or planning? Am no. I? Number three, it is about planning. The fourth one now, it is the development of curriculum design. Yeah. And then the fifth is the curriculum support materials. Development of syllabus. Okay, thank you. Labas. Production of Pascal. 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 What curriculum development? Can't be seen. Okay. Now, why, why, why can we just have someone? giving us all the steps, then we can discuss, because I believe we are teachers. Once we have the steps, we can be able to digest and look, and look into, it, into it. So we can do thorough, re, thorough research once we have the steps. Because I believe, I believe we cannot have, I believe we cannot have the development of the materials before you have a design. Because it is from a design that we are yeah, going yeah. to think of the material that we are going to use to implement the curriculum. And again, you cannot have a syllabus before you have a design. Because a, a syllabus is supposed to be drawn from the design. Although in our CBC, they just brought a design, but they have not developed a syllabus for that. <laughs> we are terming it as the syllabus. They are taking the design as the syllabus. Yeah. Okay, the fourth is the development of curriculum design. The fifth one, development of classes. Six, production of curriculum support materials. Production. Yeah. Why don't you start from number one? Okay. It was needs as Hey. My name. Uh, do this. Just share. Type them. I think once you type it, it will be easier for us to to discuss. Once we have the steps, you are twenty. Now we learn uh, from observation. Once we see what has been typed, then we can be able to think. Okay. Let so, me correct something. Uh, okay, the 
Uh-huh. Unaona ya tatu fildema, the third stage. Yeah. Planning, the third stage. Uh, planning. Yeah, planning is where you are you are producing the curriculum design. Planning hiyo yote kabla ndio wende materials sasa inside the planning is where the production of curriculum design ina inapatikana hapo kwa planning. It is the budget. We only yes. budget under planning. Under the budgeting now we go to four stage the development. There is a difference between budgeting and development. But I, I, I was seeing somewhere during this stage of planning, mm. that is where the subjects to be taught and time is allocated, ways mm-hmm. of financing, facilities required, provision of physical facilities, in servicing teachers, assessment, it's also take a planning. I love to say that ya material sasa materials production we ulikuwa room gani wewe ama atasiongea na mtu adhika anyway i was reading what moja kwa pindema you are not early na nicely pindema eh i think she's right because under planning that's why you have to plan for the implementation of the uh, uh curriculum that's when we we'll have to think of uh, how are you going to develop uh, the curriculum how are you going to train the teachers how are you going to ensure that you are changing from the old curriculum and and do transformation so that you Bernard, uh, yes. now our thoughts will be Bernard, wrong. Bernard, I, data. I think hello uh, i think when you, i think when you talk about planning as a whole you you have already concluded the process no you know under planning is yes. like when you Swaje nimalize kwanza kueleza When you plan you don't yes. do you lay everything that you want to be done in written that is planning Then after laying everything that you want to be done in written that's yes. when now you go to the next step because like pro- for our curriculum <laughs> right now the ministry of education had to plan how do they plan they have to think of how will they be able to uh, train the teachers how will they be able to ensure that the books are printed and published by the publishers the kind of information that are, the kind of the uh, uh, content that is supposed to be taught so you lay it in written that is planning yes after planning now you produce the materials and then piloting and then implementation lastly uh, monitoring and evaluation sorry after oh, planning okay. after mm. planning state the long term and short term or uh, any objective yes. then after the objective mm-hmm. select uh, selection and organization of the content and then, uh, that goes hand in hand with the selection and organization of the learning experiences then now you acquire the resources and facilities that are needed then you prepare a uh, preparation of implementers and uh, the, uh, and the stakeholders then now you come and pilot after piloting you assess whether whatever was uh, the, the objectives had been achieved then if they were achieved you continue by implementation of the program then finally you institutionalize the program then at the end of the everything you evaluate the entire program once madam alitupatia seven points hiyo ingine umetoa wapi madam alitupatia seven points hiyo ingine umetoa wapi josephine basi mimi nina tisa alafu nayo madam ya yeah, madam notes ni mimi niliandika ni needs of assessment policy yes. for education yes. curriculum planning uh-huh. development of curriculum support materials yes number 5 is piloting uh-huh. number 6 school implementation alafu monitoring three, monitoring and evaluation yes this is for breaking 
Now they are, they are expanding. Give me by Madam the seven, seven, seven steps. Remember, we were taught by different tutors. But since so you right. I used to be online class. Where, 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 where? It will be so much more. Uh, it is the stages. The stages. The stages are supposed to be nine in number. Tulifundishwa tisa. Yeah, they are nine. They are supposed to be nine. Na yule anasema ni online class hebu mkumbushe tulisoma baada ya cut 1. Face face to face after cut 1. Hola, respect. Sawa. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye. Uh Now I, I don't want us to get confused here. Yeah, kindly please. Uh, I don't want us to get confused here. Now when it comes to the curriculum implementation process, uh, let me try to enlarge this so that uh, we can have a view of uh, what is there. Yes, so when it comes to curriculum implementation process, it takes the following stages. Uh, the very first one is the needs assessment. And under the needs assessment, of course, um, as we are going to see in the structure of the Ministry of Education, there is what is called the data collection on what is what needs to be done, what needs to be added, what needs to be improved. So there's going to be data collection. And, uh, and, and during this data collection, the existing curriculum is going to, uh, to play a very vital role because from it, its, uh, its disadvantages, its loopholes, uh, this is where the data is going to be, uh, to be collected. The discrepancy that is existing, that knowledge gap that is existing, the data is going to be collected. And a report is going to be written. And after the report has been written, as per the structure of the Ministry of Education, there is going to be the, dis the dissemination of the report, that is, uh, from uh, from one from one from one uh, office to the other, and they are going to, to consider. And after the needs assessment in uh, uh, the very first stage, we get to the policy formation in stage two, where again we are we are going to to have a review of the national goals of education. Now, why review the national goals of education? just to make sure that um, uh, whatever data which has been collected, is it, is it a data that is in line, or rather, uh, is it data that is in line with the, the national goals of education? And if the data is not, what must be done during the policy formation that is going to align the things? And again, the level of, of, uh, level of, object, the level of objectives are also um, decided here under the policy formation, then the number of subjects uh, to, be, to be done under the policy formation still. And uh, the third stage is on the curriculum designs. Uh, that is the, the curriculum design, sorry, uh, it was overwritten. Now, in the curriculum designs, uh, of course, this one now speaks a language that is close to the CBC. Under the curriculum designs, there is going to be the subject general objectives. Uh, the subject general objectives ought not to have been underlined uh, because it is part of what appears under the curriculum designs. So the subject general objectives are going to be considered here. The topical content, content that is covered uh, in each topic, the scope and the sequence. The scope means now the time that uh, the, the, the lesson is going to take, uh, maybe teaching a topic or a subtopic is supposed to take, and then the development of the curriculum design itself. So we start with subject general objectives, the topical content, the scope of time required and the sequence, and then the curriculum designs uh, itself. In the stage number four, we talk about uh, the syllabus development and approval. In stage four, the syllabus development and approval. 
And uh, under the syllabus development and approval, the, the ministry will have to conduct the workshops. It has to conduct the workshops. It has to come up with the subject panel. It has to come up with the course panel. And uh, from the workshops to the subject panel to the course panel, these panels, as they sit, they discuss and they give, they come up with their recommendations of how the syllabus should, uh, should appear. And uh, in most of the times, you will realize that uh, in Kenya, this is done by at the, at the KICD. And then there is the printing and production of the syllabus. After all those processes have been uh, followed, there is printing and production of the syllabus. Of course, in stage number five, we have the development of curriculum support materials. Uh, this is where we are going to have the, uh, the, after the syllabus has been developed and approved, then uh, we now have the, uh, the development of curriculum support materials. And you realize that the Ministry of Education works together with the very many publishers. It will work with the long on publishers, uh, it will work with the HK ICD, it will work with the Moran publishers, among other publishers, in the production of the course books, and then the, also in the production of non-printed materials that are going to be used uh, in the classroom setup during the, uh, uh, during the, the sixth uh, stage, uh, which is now uh, the teacher preparation. Actually, it is going to be used in uh, the seventh stage. But now in the sixth stage, we are having the teacher preparation. This is now uh, under this stage that is going to be the development of the handbooks and the manuals for the teachers. Uh, the teacher preparation, that is we have the development of handbooks and manuals. And then there is going to be the orientation of the teachers. The teachers are going to be oriented so that they, become, they are made to be familiar with what is taking place, uh, even as they prepare for the piloting or the facing in stage number seven, where there is going to be number one, the selection of pilot schools. The piloting is not done in all schools. A uh, group of schools or schools are going to be selected where the piloting will take place. And then there is uh, under this piloting stage, there is development of instructional materials. There is going to be piloting itself now. After the selection of the schools to be uh, to work as piloting centers, there is going to be development of instructional materials. And then there is going to be the piloting itself being undertaken. Then during the piloting, the piloting uh, process has to be monitored. The syllabus will have to be uh, revision of the syllabus. It will have now to be revised to accommodate um, the outcomes uh, that have been singled out during the piloting period. And then finally there, there is going to be under piloting, there is going to be vetting of curriculum support materials and approving them, vetting meaning uh, approving them. And in the eighth stage, we are having the national implementation. The, the, the curriculum has passed the piloting phase. It has been recommended. The syllabus has been revised. The, the recommendation of the curriculum support materials has gone through. In the national implementation, again, there is the teacher or orientation on how they are supposed to carry out the implementation exercise. And finally, uh, under that uh, um, stage eight, there is distribution of the syllabuses. And finally, is the stage number nine, monitoring and evaluation. Monitoring and evaluation. So under the monitoring and evaluation, of course, there is monitoring itself. And uh, here we now have the summative evaluation. We are also having the syllabus revision. Then we will now get to the formation of the academic board and also the course panel. I can see somebody saying you are taught differently. Uh, I don't know what you people are also having, but uh, basically uh, that is supposed to be uh, 
Uh, that is supposed to be the, the curriculum uh, development and the implementation process. And the most important thing here is that uh, you need to master the nine stages. If you have the nine stages, you will not miss something to write about the nine stages. Unless somebody so, asks no a planning. question. It seems no planning eh? as a stage. Yes. It, it seems no planning as a stage. Now, is there planning, please help me now there. You are talking of, you are talking Mr. of planning Mr. stage. Mr. Pascal. Yes. For me, I think there is planning and yes. uh, that uh, that policy formulation. Policy formation, yes. yes. There's planning there. Now, uh, let me say that... Uh, Another now, thing, under, Mr. Uh, yes, yes, yes. under planning, uh, me, what I heard the teacher saying, that the strategic plan uh, planning involves a set of decision and actions that results in the planning and development of school programs. And then it focuses on the decision-making, viability, feasibility of the program. Then kuna timing, kuna budget, kuna cost. Yani anything to do with the planning, iko apo. How are you going to do it? Then after that, ndiyo sasa tunakuja objectives. Iye nye unasema curriculum, design, subject, whatever, whatever objectives. Then after that, there is something that you said, yenye ninaona ilikuja after piloting which is selection and organization of the content wakati uh, uh, immediately uh, after they have set the objectives na niliona ilikuja hapa kwa piloting under under piloting uh, Samuel just a minute under piloting we have talked about selection of pilot schools and then the development of instructional materials and then the piloting itself. The materials are now going to be used uh, in carrying out the piloting uh, process. And uh, as the piloting is going to be carried out, there is going to be monitoring. There is going to be monitoring of the uh, piloting process and uh, the recommendations will have to be written again there. And uh, also there is going to be now after the piloting, the revision of the already developed syllabus that we had seen up there. What, I wanted, is, what yes. I wanted is teacher orientation. Do we orientate teachers before piloting or after piloting? <laughs> now, in the piloting schools, orientation has to be done to the teachers. Uh, orientation has to be done to the teachers of the schools where piloting is going to take place. So and orientation has to be orientation again has to be done to the teachers now during the implementation of the curriculum. It means it has successfully passed the piloting phase and therefore it is acceptable to be implemented, to be, uh, to be used uh, nationwide. Well, uh, it's okay, thank you. Me, I only had a, a certain input from what I had and what I wrote, yes. maybe I was breaking them. The, the preparation of implementers came before piloting. And implementers here are teachers, the courses, yes. curriculum leaders, uh, supervisors, the, the support, the, 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 the religious-based training, whatever, the, 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 the support, the school support, the community and the agencies. Yani, the implementers, preparation of the implementers and other stakeholders, has to be done by the time they are now going to pilot, they are fully aware of what they are going to give people because it is now going to be tried. They have to be prepared. Then they, they, they are given whatever they are going to try. That is why it is called piloting. So how can we pilot? Then we train teachers. We orientate teachers after piloting. I couldn't really be confused. Josephine. Uh, it's okay. 
time. No, I just want to I just want to explain on that. We talk about the in uh, stage eight. We talk about the teacher orientation. Remember, during uh, during step six, that is the teacher preparation. There is orientation of teachers. Who are these teachers who are being oriented? These are teachers who maybe not all of them, but those who are going to be uh, in the schools where the piloting is going to take place, okay. they have to be prepared psychologically that piloting is going to take place here. And this is what is going to be carried out. Now, if, come. should this, should, yes, come. yes. Before you proceed. Yes. Before you proceed, I think the stages are well uh, arranged, teachers preparation is supposed to be done first before piloting, whether it is in the piloting schools or the uh, or the whole nation, all teachers are supposed to be prepared first before piloting. And that's what you had Socion telling the ministry the other time when they were yes. arguing over the CBC. Socion used to tell the ministry that they are supposed to prepare teachers, teachers first, then they do the piloting. But in our case here in Kenya, they rushed. They did not uh, go through all these stages. So she's right, teachers' preparation is the, uh, the uh, you train teachers on how to handle the uh, curriculum that you are bringing in place. Yes. Now, uh, I just want us to look at the last question. Can I keep in a bit, Pascal, before we proceed? Eh? Yes, Mr. Midimo. Now, uh, I, I can understand where the confusion is. Yes. Uh, because uh, different uh, lecturers were saying their own things. Uh, because uh, on the ground, yes. there is no way, there is no way when, before you do piloting, you cannot yes. subject all the teachers to, to, to orientation. You have to select a few teachers for orientation, then you go for piloting. And then after we go to pi for piloting, if we find that uh, there, there are some changes to be done, the changes are made, then the other teachers are now orientated using the, the new guidelines that have, uh, the, the, short, uh, the gaps that have been identified. Meaning that the, the curriculum is now accepted to be used yeah, because I, I discovered even when we are, we are doing uh, the, the, the community-based rehabilitation. Yes. In fact, they were saying that there are only two methods. But when you go, when you look at the past papers, your, your KCP, your, your NEC, NEC yes. exam, in part of combat, there are three. You are told to list the three. But the lecturers were insisting there are two. The modules are also saying two. That so there's really a lot of confusion in those modules. Is it really Gani Nagani? There was a confusion between the, uh, the, the, the approaches and the methods. Sure. Let's yeah. look at the last question on the structure of the Ministry of Education. Describe the structure of the Ministry of Education. The structure of the Ministry of Education one headed by the minister, or now known as cabinet secretary of education. Yes. At the top. Yes, we now have the, the cabinet secretary at the top. Of course, he's uh, appointed by the president and is a political figure in that office. Uh, appointed by the president and approved by the, the National Assembly. After the, we have the, after, we have the principal, we have the principal secretary under the cabinet yes. secretary. Yes, the principal secretary under the cabinet secretary. That one is a, a senior. That is the senior most administrator. Who, uh, the senior most who? Uh, he's. Uh, I think that one is a civil servant. Uh, excuse me, Pascal. Yes. I think you can. You just display the, the flow chart for the sake of time. Just display the, the, the flow chart so that we can discuss as we move. Yes. 
Yes, there we are. Is it visible? Yes, on my end, visible. Yes. Now, okay. I'm in secretary, I'm in principal. Secretary. Now, let me clarify. Let me clarify on that. The permanent secretary in the Osaiza and a principal secretary, why 2010 constitution? Yes. So the word permanent is to allow a replace a principal secretary. Josephine Umelewa. Nimelewa, and I mean, easy to see Juangi at a hey. Eh. Our E. Nataka, what were history? What were social? <laughs> yes, sir. You can carry on, carry on, take us through. I've uh, I've brought the, the, the updated one, the principal secretary. Uh, how? Just uh, the cabinet secretary is uh, the is the one in charge of the Ministry of Education. Under him, we have the principal secretary. This one uh, is the senior most chief executive officer, I think so, in the ministry. Then under him, we have education secretary. And then we have director of basic education. We have director of policy and planning. We have director of higher education. Excuse director me, I of quality assurance and standards. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Is it director of basic education or directorate? It should be directorate, sorry, sir. Directorate, uh, you directorate, yeah. Yeah, it should be directorate. Uh, in both cases, they are supposed to be, um, where I've written director, all of them are supposed to be directorate. Sorry for the... Now, uh, what, now the, Pascal. Yes. What is the difference between director and the directorate? <laughs> director is one person. Directorate yes. means the whole department. Oh, the whole department. That's good now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. so not any directorate of quality assurance of a higher education of whatever, whatever. Yes. Correct. You correctly said yes, madam. Now, under basic education, uh, mm -hmm. what do you get under basic education? I think pr primary school, Likoapo. So basic education is uh, uh, the education that we are having, whereby you have the uh, uh, primary school education, secondary school education. I think uh, uh, universities, uh, colleges, uh, Gumbaru, Gumbaru, Yawatu, Akubua, they are all under basic education. Except universities under director of higher education. Universities are under the Directorate of Higher Education. Yeah. Correct. Then policy and planning. What is uh what do you mean when you say policy uh, policy and planning? These are the technocrats. That the defines technocrats of the of the ministry. Uh-huh. And, 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 and the one who policies. Yeah, they are the ones who now they are the ones who now come up with the legal instruments that will now govern the implementation of the education uh, of the curriculum in the Republic of Kenya. Uh huh. Yes. They make an update policies. Yeah. Now, the Directorate of Higher Education is does it mean that this one is in charge of a uh, tertiary institution like the universities and uh, uh, colleges? Correctly said. Then Directorate of Quality Assurance and Standards. I think this one, they are all found in, we have we have in each county and each sub-county has a quality assurance and a standard officer, if I'm not wrong. They're in Correct. charge of, they're in charge of uh, uh, checking and ensuring that the curriculum and uh, the curriculum is adhered to and teachers are teaching according to what the ministry wants. Yes. 
Aki kabisa yes. mungu kwa naona binguni. They also established well, the people teacher ratio. Yeah. It is the Directorate of Quality Assurance and Standards that will give feedback to the Ministry of Education on the needs in their, their respective zones. Because right now, I think we are still under zones. They are the ones that will report on, which, uh, on what the Ministry has to improve in terms of education in their area of jurisdiction. Aki akifuma muombe tu Mungu hii kitu isikuje wengine hata tuta hata mimi sielewi ni nini nasemwa Tutakwenda Unaona utaelewa mimi mtiani kifika kwa mtiani mami utaelewa kila kitu Unaona hizi modules alafu hizi modules nimeelewa kitu moja kuhusu modules Modules usi cramp just read them to understand the information then ikikuja examination apply apply read widely hiyo module zingine ziko na mistake nyingi ndani yake naam ziko na mistake kuna swali za kuna mimi wacha niulize hapo swali sasa kama mnasema msome module yote mjue kuna hiki tunaita tu evaluation types of evaluation imejaa kwa kila module sasa usome uelewe uweke evaluation ya Azes karikila mamu weke evaluation ya CBR elewa tu the meaning of evaluation and then cook na sibana leo ya kutoka ya chakula exam na that munasema tuseme tu types of evaluation ya CBR na types of evaluation ya hii nyingine na tuikwishe mtu ashike alafu na assessment hii kitu ni to assessment nimejaa kila mali na hii ko tofauti Uh, allow me take one hand which is up because we are already at 1006 uh, oh yes samuel all right uh, i lower my hand sir plus i want us to i want us to stop the yes akifuma pascal yes Just allow me to pass my special greetings to Jeff Ereng. Ereng is in the in the class I've seen him. Uh, this guy <laughs> this guy is the one who made me who I am today. Oh yes. Ereng how are you? I'm doing great. Ah wewe ni mtu wa nguvu bwana. Ungekuwa kasarani? Yeah. Ungekula nyama choma. Ereng Uh, Ereng alinisaidia sana Pascal. We were in the same college. Alikuwa first, alikuwa second year wangu mimi nilikuwa first wake. Na and he trained me a lot. Right now I'm a trainer because he trained me. Thanks to Ereng tukutane inbox bana ya WhatsApp. Ah. Mr. <laughs> Pascal. Yes. Wakishapeana salamu sasa sisi pia tunakupea salamu tukisema ya kwamba kesho yeah. tuanze na assessment and evaluation ya CBR ya hii nini ya ngongongo yote ndio tuweke <laughs> and evaluation ukiona matumbo inakataa kufanya kasi aki inabidi tu ikuwe hiyo ngongongo because ngongo. not 